You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Happy Friday, everyone. It is a wonderful Friday. How is it November already? I don't even know. We just launched our Slay the Holidays this week, which I'm super excited about. Um, We are doing it competition style this year because, listen, I am over this participation trophy world. We need some competition and we're bringing it with our Slay the Holidays challenge. So yes, I'm so excited about it. Um, If you have not heard about our Slay the Holidays challenge, we are starting November 14th. It is seven weeks long. Um, you get to have a one-on-one call with your coach, which is either Liz, myself, Jen, Courtney, one of our amazing coaches. Um, you are on their team then, and you are in an awesome app where you track five daily habits um, that may seem very simple, but get into the holidays. And those are the things that are first to go. And that's what usually leads us down that spiral of all start January 1st. Yep. Um, and so I'm really excited. Um, I think it's going to be an awesome little competition and it's always fun to have that, you know, competitive fire to keep you accountable and have your coach to keep you accountable and the individualization aspect of it, which I feel like very few challenges have. It's always like, here's a template, here's a plan, follow it and hope that you stick through the six weeks. Yeah. Now you like actually have a coach coach that's having a one-on-one call with you in the beginning, going over things, recommending things for you in terms of intake or habits, and then you have access to them throughout the process. So yep. I'm Week- really excited about this challenge. Weekly calls with your team too, which I think mm-hmm. is going to be really important um, because yep. there's going to be a lot of different educational components that we're going to be going through. And yep. on the weekly group calls with your team, we're going to be talking about how do we put these things into action? It's one thing to have knowledge. It's another thing to apply the knowledge that you learn. And that's a big gap that we see with a lot of clients that have come to us with past, you know, diets that they have gone through. It's like they didn't really learn anything from it. They were just drinking the shake because the template said to drink the shake. They didn't even like the shake, you know. Um, Our clients are pumped. We announced it to them on Monday. (laughs) Lots of good feedback. Um, A lot of our one-on-one clients are super excited. They get competitive. I'm going to throw this out there. Beck and I are very competitive. Okay. So competitive. I think our coaches are also competitive because, you know, Jen, you know, previous CrossFit history, Courtney's also been into um, CrossFit, things like that. Um, If you're on my team and you're not doing the simple things, we're going to have some hard conversations because my team is not going down. We're going to have a little (laughs) bit of an issue. We're going to need you to drink some more damn water and set some alarms. I don't care if it's every 20 minutes, if I'm texting you every 15 (laughs) minutes. I'm going to need you to get outside, even if it's snowing, to go for a dang walk. Okay, (laughs) you guys, we are not frail. All right. We are not fragile beings. We are empowered, amazing women. We can do hard things. Okay. We can. And listen, you're never going to change if you don't change things. All right. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. We got to start being aware. And I am so pumped for today's Friday Fire. It was inspired by Andy Frisella because I have been just on his stuff lately. Like it's it's been what I need. Mm-hmm. I feel like after the baby was born, I had a time period as needed, obviously, of I was exhausted. I was feeling sorry for myself. I was, you know, it was, it was, we were struggling with some things. And then I was like, snap out of it, Becca. You are totally capable of doing hard things. You were born for this. You are an amazing mom. Your child is totally fine. They will be okay. And I'm, I'm like back at it. And I just, I have this like renewed fire within me. I love it. He has helped. Yeah. Hey, and listen, everybody out there, your kids are also fine if they have pizza rolls sometimes or candy on Halloween as they should. I got a little uh, inbox uh, message on Halloween. If you guys saw my Facebook post, um, Instagram post, I probably shouldn't post it. I was just really ticked off um, because this lady is like, how could you let your kid have candy? You're a holistic health coach. My child is four and he's never had candy. I'm like, that's awesome, you know, Great. but uh, I'm not telling you how to raise your kids. Don't tell me how to raise mine. I also have no idea who you are. So 
went to the spam box and blocked her. And one of our old coaches uh, messaged me. She's like, no way this really happened. And I was telling her, she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, whatever. Just block her. I was like, I already did, you know, because here's the thing for, and this is what my sister said. She goes, I don't know how you and Becca do it. Cause you guys share so much of your life with people. Um, and we're very real. Like, you know, I think a lot of our oh, clients sure. appreciate that, that we go through hard times. Like we go through our own phases where like, you know, we got a little fluffy, we gained a little, you know, weight or, mm-hmm. you know, we want to lean out or just whatever it is. There's struggles. There's struggles, even with self-sabotage, even as health coaches, even in your own career, the weekends are t- still just as tempting as it is for everybody else. But kind of what we're going to talk about today is like we have an obligation to ourselves to show ourselves that we deserve to show up um, and do our best and to, you know, live the life that we were created for, are created for. Um, and so for every, you know, buddy out there who's listening who may be you know, feels this way as we go through this. I just want you to remember that this is not us judging you. This is us being real, raw, and relevant with you that some of these things like we definitely have struggled with too. Um, And for every person in your life who's going to give you shit about changing, there's going to be 20 other people in your corner cheering you on. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, the more that you listen to, I would say like people like Andy Frisella or some of these other, you know, really big name, um, I don't even know what you would call Andy. Like I I just look up to him as kind of like a mentor, but really big name people in the coaching space. If you know, they own these very successful businesses, entrepreneurs word I'm Mm -hmm. looking for here. Um, (laughs) They talk a lot about that. They get all this hate. They get all the, you know, messages and they get the hate from other people in the comments, but guess what they do? They ignore them and they move forward because they are, believe that they are made for something great. They believe in their mission and they are going to live out their life the way that aligns with their values. And so hopefully, you know, you understand today that in your own life, you have people in your corner who will support you. Um, And if you don't, then you got to get out there and you got to find them because we get so wrapped up in the day to day. And I know that I used to get so wrapped up in like one mean message. I remember Becca and I would check our business account and, you know, people would say things and we're like, oh my God, the world is crumbling. We don't have a business, you know? And now it's like, okay, we're not for you. That's fine. There are many other people out there that you can follow because we have tons of amazing clients and tons of amazing women in our community that are supporting each other. And So just keep that in mind as we go through this podcast today, because there's some tough love, but I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people. Absolutely. And like you guys, there's, if someone is doing amazing things and just like excited about life and always positive and always peppy and you're hating on that, like check yourself. Okay. You're hating on someone being amazing and you're hating on someone succeeding. We don't need that. Okay. I will say there is an exception. Sometimes we need to complain about our kids. Okay. Because kids can be assholes sometimes. And that is an exception. But if someone's like doing amazing things and getting in shape and like eating healthier and taking control of their life, like don't be the bad energy for that person. All right. And we get it. Like you can easily get wrapped up in your day to day. You can get wrapped up in the stress, the to-do list, the kids, the cooking, the cleaning, the holidays. Like if you really want to, you can let all of this drown you. You can be living your life gasping for air each day, not knowing where the day went, finishing the day and being like, I don't even know what I, I didn't accomplish anything today. Never getting what you want done. Always feeling like a failure too, because the 80,000 things on your to-do list are just like constantly growing. And we don't think about like, basically, are we living our life to be amazing? Mm -hmm. Are we intentionally doing things on a daily basis to be amazing? Like, think about those people, those people that seem like they have it all together. They have a ton of energy. They get out and do walks. They cook dinner. They play with their kids. They fit in their workout. They have de-stressing time. Like you guys, those things are intentional. Those people don't just like get lucky and have it all together. And they aren't annoying. The reason that they're annoying is because they're probably doing what seems impossible to you because you won't change your life to make the time to do those things. And so it's easier to just sit back behind your computer, behind your phone and hate on them. When in reality, what we need to do, we need to get out of our effing bubble of stress and our to-do list. And we need to start doing things intentionally to make your life amazing because why would you want anything less? Like really think about that and sit there. Why would you want your life to be boring or lazy or ordinary or average even? I don't want that for myself. I know Liz doesn't want that for herself. Like that is how I wake up every day. I, you know what guys, we all have shitty days. I had a really shitty day last Tuesday, like really bad. I was in tears by the end of the day. It was overwhelming all day. It was just a bad day. Yep. 
I woke up the next day and I moved on. Yep. And I think, you know, we get so bogged down in, you know, work, kids, friends, family, holidays, events, trying to please everybody else that you say that you don't have time. But the reality of it is you're not prioritizing yourself and your to do list is skewed. You are not putting yourself on your to do list. You are not putting these things that you say matter to you or that make you feel good on your to do list. You guys have probably heard Becca and I talk about this a hundred times on this podcast. We're those annoying chicks. We're the annoying people. And you know why we're annoying? Is because we manage our time. We put it on our calendar. If you had access to our calendars, and I'm happy to share it with anybody that wants to see, I have Marcus on my calendar. She has Taylor and Carson on her calendar. We have our workouts on our calendar. We have time that we walk on our calendar. We have time that we feed ourselves on our calendar. And the thing is here is if you aren't taking control of your time and you're not managing that to-do list, then we're going to feel like we're drowning and we're going to feel like we're stuck because it's easy for the days to just kind of fly by when you don't manage your time. And if you want something greater, if you don't want to live a life that's boring, you don't want to be lazy, you don't want to be mediocre or just, you know, kind of ordinary, then you've got to start getting in the driver's seat and you got to buckle in and get ready to do some hard work. And if you're not willing to do the hard work, then here's what I'm going to say. Stop complaining about the things that you're not getting in terms of results because you're not doing the work. And that's hard. It's a hard thing to it's a hard pill to swallow but at the end of the day you are made for more and you have the capability to do more you have the capability to be more you just have to start changing the priority list and start putting yourself on the to-do list we see this a lot with ladies who kind of like are the martyrs of their own life right Mm -hmm. We see this with self-sabotage too. You know, we see this with a a variety of things, with workouts, with tracking food, with, you know, other people in their life that are pulling them down. At some point in time, you're going to have to cut those people out of your life or have a tough conversation with them to say, this doesn't serve me. You're not helping me get to where I want to be. And so when you look at all of these people who air quote, have it all together, because guess what guys, Becca and I do not have it all together. Half the days we're texting each other, we're going to pull our hair out. I don't even know what direction I'm going. And I need to slow down and just take a little bit of a break to gather myself (laughs) or go have a good cry in the bathroom for five minutes. Um, We struggle too, but we have to manage our time. That's what it comes down to. If you don't manage your time and you don't take control, you are going to continue to identify the way that you identify right now. You're going to continue to self-sabotage. You're going to continue to, you know, falter to the triggers in your life because we haven't managed the expectations in terms of even like our environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we kind of wanted to let you guys have like actionable steps that need to happen if you feel like you are not in the driver's seat of your own life. If you feel like you are the one that is just every day is this whirlwind of things that happen around you and you don't have control of it and you're stressing over it and you never get what you want done. And you've tried different you know, programs and different plans and meal templates and diets and nothing ever seems to work. The first step is you have to have awareness. You have to bring awareness. Like when your life is not how you want it to, where are you falling short? It's not that you don't have time, guys. You just don't manage your time properly. I promise you, everyone has the same 24 hours in the day. And I know plenty of people that have kids, that have multiple kids that get their shit done. You just don't prioritize properly. I know people that don't have kids that can't seem to find time at all. And I'm just like, take my children and then, you know, let me know how it is with children too. Like, I just don't get it. And you guys, these are hard truths, but they are truths nonetheless. And if you don't know where your time is, hire someone to help you find it. Like hire someone to help you start prioritizing and figuring it out because you have to figure out what you are doing that is not getting you to where you want to be. And you're just going to stay stuck in the same spiral. Yeah. And you have to be honest with yourself in this. When we are becoming aware of where our time is spent, you have to be honest about the fact that like, yeah, you're scrolling Instagram four different times a day and watching people's stories for 30 minutes, or you're watching Netflix and staying up, you know, for two or three hours a night, just watching TV, right? Because some people won't be honest with those things because it's like they're downtime or they deserve it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is track every 15 minutes where the time goes. We used to do this um, at Target and human resources. When people weren't performing, we had them start jotting down like, what task are you actually getting done? Because according to this expectation, it should only take you two hours. And you're telling me after an eight hour shift, you didn't even complete it. 
well, what were you doing? Most of the time, what were they doing? Hiding in the back of the stock room on their freaking cell phones, you know? Um, so you guys have to be honest too with where that time is because we, we do get it. Most people out there are very busy, are moving, you know, from mm-hmm. thing to thing, back to back. But there's a lot of different space in here that I think we just kind of that gray area forget about that if we manage, you know, the time in our to-do list a little bit better, we can get a lot of that time back. So you got to be honest yeah. if you are going to be, you know, bringing awareness to this. Yeah. And the second one is huge, guys. You have to let go. You have to let go of your past. Let go of who you think you are, whether it's a lazy person or a person who hates exercise or a person who doesn't have the time to cook or doesn't want to cook. If part of how you identify doesn't serve who you want to be, you have to let go of it. No one fucking cares what your past is except for you. I promise you, you are the only one that is letting it control your today and your future. Can your past teach you? Absolutely, it can teach you, but it shouldn't control you. I know plenty of people, like I think initially of Mark Anthony, one of our friends that works at First Form, Mm -hmm. used to be in jail. He was in jail. I don't remember how long he was in jail, but he basically, I think he was in jail for marijuana use or something like that. I don't know. Um, Something silly, but basically he is now obviously out of jail. He works at First Form. He is crushing life. He took back control of his life. He is totally someone that could have let his past control what happened in his future. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people out there. And to be honest, guys, the reason that other people might care about your past is because you keep bringing it up because you keep talking about it and you keep identifying as it. And so if you are struggling because you think like, I just can't get out of this cycle, I just can't get out of this spiral, it's because you keep reliving the things that you've done in your past. You can stop right now. You can stop exactly in this moment. You could quit your job right now. You could decide to go to the grocery store right now and meal prep for the next week. Like you guys, you have the time. You have the time to do the things. You just need to let go of what you think you are. Because guess what? You are the only one that is able to do that. Yep. So you have to let go of the past. I'm also going to add on to that because I just had a conversation with one of my clients today that I think, you know, Becca, you'll resonate with this a lot. So oftentimes when we are trying to improve ourselves, we compare ourselves to what was, you know, in the past, maybe at the time that, you know, she didn't have kids and she was able to go to the gym and do, you know, 45 minutes on the treadmill and then strength train for another 45 minutes. And so she's been stuck in this headspace of like, God, I, I'm just angry that I can't do those things anymore because now I have this crazy, busy, stressful job. I have, you know, my daughter, we're figuring out childcare, all these things. And so we had to have the conversation of, you've got to stop comparing that to now because this is a different season. And the longer that you compare yourself and let that, you know, past basically like haunt you in this way, it's like, well, if I can't be perfect, I can't do what I once did, you know, at the level that I once did it, then all effort is null. That's not true. You just have to start putting your best foot forward in the situation that you are in. And maybe eventually down the line, we can get back to that place where, you know, you can go to the gym and have a hour, hour and a half, like workout where you just crush it or whatever that looks like for somebody. But like, Becca, I'm sure this is, you know, so true for you too. Like looking back at your CrossFit days from, you know, that high level athlete in you compared to now in postpartum, if you constantly Mm -hmm. compared yourself to that, you'd be angry every day, right? Because well, I'm just not where Mm -hmm. I was and my life is so different. My body is not cooperating. No, she's postpartum. She's had three pregnancies, you know? And so this is another piece for women specifically. I think it's really, really important for you to evaluate evaluate where you are today in this season and let go of all of those things that you once were able to do because right now the brutal truth is that's not what we're able to do in the moment. So what we can do is do our best and we can manage the time we have now. Absolutely. And you know what? I could, I could be so upset right now. I'm not as strong as I'm used to be. My butt's bigger than it was pre pre babies. Like there's so many things I can find that are negatives in my mind, but you know what instead I do? I'm so freaking excited to get strong again. Mm -hmm. I am so excited because right now I'm starting from like square one. I've basically been pregnant for two years. I had a two to three month hiatus between the pregnancies. Like I have so much to gain right now. And I am so excited for that process because I know I'm going to get strong again. I don't have a timeline for it. I know it's going to take a while. I'm just excited to do the work. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to put the work in again and see the results that I will reap from that work that I put in. So shift your narrative, guys. It'll change your life. Just shift your narrative. And this last step, you got to build your environment and let yourself build momentum from it. Like you want to know how to build confidence, make decisions you're proud of. Stop doing shit that you feel guilty about. Yeah. Simple guys. It really is like 
that might sound harsh, but it's pretty damn simple. Yep. You pick the healthier choice at the restaurant. You say no to the alcohol at the party. You go to bed early so that you can wake up and work out the next day. Each decision you make that serves your goal helps you build confidence. I've said this multiple times on calls this week. I have never once regretted not drinking. Mm-hmm. Not once. Not once in my life. I've plenty of times regretted drinking. <laughs> plenty, plenty of times. Not once have I regretted saying no. Yep. And waking up clear headed the next day after a good night of sleep. Yep. So yes, are those decisions hard to make? For sure they are. But you know what makes them easier? Setting your environment up properly. Make a grocery list. Plan your week. Get the food in the house. Cook the food that you have and prepare to eat. Plan your days out, like Liz was saying. We time block our days. It's not that I have more time in my day. It's not that I'm more disciplined. It's that I plan it out and I commit to it and then I do it. Yep. I think this is huge in terms of, you know, kind of as we head into the season with your environment. If you are constantly surrounded by candy, sweets, alcohol, all these things that maybe you really enjoy from time to time, and honestly, that you should enjoy in moderation from time to time. But if you're constantly surrounded by these things, it's going to be very hard for you to achieve your goals and make progress if your goal is to lean out or build muscle or lose weight or whatever, because you're basically putting a bunch of shit in your body that you don't need. And so here's one of the first things we're doing with the Slay the Holiday Challenge. We're talking about setting up our environments for success, getting the right foods in the house, getting trigger foods out of sight, out of mind, or out of the house if you can. We're going to be teaching you know a lot of things in terms of ingredients that we need to be looking out for, even in some of these like health foods, like some of the things that are just hidden in our food products today that are actually inflammatory and detrimental to our health. Like we're starting here with the environment as step one before we start changing or implementing any of the habits, because it is so important that your environment is supportive of your goals. And Again, there's so many things that we can do like on a day-to-day basis to control the environment too. Like bad habits don't repeat themselves because we don't want to change, right? They repeat themselves because we have shitty systems in place to create the change. So stop using the plan if, let's say, air quote here, I'm going to try harder next week. Or one of my favorites is, I have more motivation, so I'm not tempted by the candy. No. No. Your motivation is so angry. I get so angry about this because I see so many people continue to hold themselves back from the simplest stupid things that is all within their control. If that candy is not in the house, we're not consuming the candy. Most likely, right? Some people go out and buy it. Mm-hmm. But yep. it really comes down to that. Motivation is never going to drive us. It might drive us for like a couple of weeks if we're starting from a place where like, you know, health is in a really bad spot or we just really don't um, love our body. Like we can hate our way for a few weeks into motivation, but at some point in time, we've got to be disciplined. And part of that is having an environment that supports your goals. And it's a very simple thing to do, but most people don't do this. They skip this very simple step When in reality, if you take this very simple step, you're going to make it so much easier on yourself in the long run because the temptations simply aren't there. Mm -hmm. I get really heated about that. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, you guys, if you're, if our clients are listening, we effing love you guys. Like we love our clients and we want best for you. But yeah, I get a little angry sometimes when people like continue to leave things on the table. Like when you have so much con- potential and you just continue to bury yourself by not setting yourself up for success and you guys look at your environment, what can you change to make it easier to follow through with your goals and then evaluate what makes it harder? Probably having the Halloween candy still on the countertop that you walk by every effing time you're in the kitchen. Like that's going to make it harder. What makes it harder? Having a full social calendar. Say no to things sometimes. Like sometimes you need to take yourself out of those situations. And you know what my biggest recommendation is? And all like totally not shameful plug, hire a coach. Mm -hmm. Now you suddenly have someone helping you clearly define the targets you need, constantly helping you adjust and troubleshoot, holding you accountable to follow through because you guys, who the F wants a lazy average life? Sure. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it. I guess that's a plus, but like, I never want to look back at my life and say, I left so much on the table. I left so much on the table because I didn't want to put in the work. Like that is not who I want to be. That is who I refuse to be. And I'll be honest for a long time in my life, 
I acted solely to please others. And it got me kind of far. Like it got me to a place. It took me to an extent, but I wasn't happy because mm-hmm. I was doing it for other people. And instead, now how I live my life, I live my life for myself and my family. Yep. That is who I live. And like, obviously our business and Liz, but that's for myself because I love what we do. I love the mission that we are on. And I love helping people figure out how to make their own lives amazing because there's no better way to live. Like I know that in today's world, stress happens. It's easy to eat the bad foods. It's easier to drink the wine when you're stressed. It's easier to do all of those things. It is because everyone else around you is probably doing it too, but I don't want to be those people. Yep. I want to be the person that other people look up to that inspires other people. I want to be an amazing business partner for Liz. I want to be an amazing wife. I want to be an amazing mom. And the only way that I do those things is by being amazing for myself and prioritizing myself, yep. not being a martyr, not putting everyone else first. And so you have to look at your environment. You have to be aware of yourself and you have to intentionally want to live an amazing life. Like this doesn't just happen. Yeah, It's not something that just like, magically appears for Liz and I we work really effing hard at it but it's worth it yeah it is always worth it you've got to find that fire in your belly you got to find what makes you tick you got to find your why you know because if you just are connected to this like scale weight like I want to lose 20 pounds and then I'll be happy you're never going to be happy you're never going to live the amazing life that you deserve to live because you're so stuck in this damn device that flashes a number back at you instead of focusing on the things that we just talked about that truly matter and are truly life-changing. And I think any of our clients who listen to this know that we talk about these things all the time, you know, with them or on group calls, or they've heard us, you know, talk about this in the body being in balance. And we're serious about this. And the clients who take this serious and they do the things that we ask them to do are the ones who thrive. Some of them you know, go a little bit slower. They implement these things a little bit slower and that's totally fine, but they all have one common answer at the end. And that is, this has been life-changing. Trust the process and do the work. However fast or slow you do the work is totally, you know, up to you. Not everybody wants to rip the bandaid off. Not everybody can rip that bandaid off, right? We can't just all of a sudden like overhaul our life. That's not what we're about. We help people implement these things step by step so that eventually, their life has completely changed. And the person that they are, their confidence, their desire for life, that fire that's burning in their gut that wants to do better, that wants to show up for themselves, that has that obligation to themselves so that in turn they can be a better mom, a better spouse, better coworker, whatever it is that they do, all the hats that they wear, they can show up better. So no matter how fast or how slow you go at it, you just have to be putting your best foot forward every day and continuing to evaluate this. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. Happy Friday, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.